do I feel discouraged? Why do the shadows come? And why does my heart come together this morning to remember and to honor the life of Dorothy Dot, known by her friends and family Raglan and to share our love and our support with the family in this time of her home going. Dot was born in here in Vinton and not long after that the family moved to the Thaxton area right around Shady Grove most of you know that. Uh, that's where the Wheeler family grew up and a lot of times walked to church uh, she always said that even though she grew up on a farm, she was from the city, f from Vinton. I can't imagine what Vinton was like 70 or 80 years ago. I grew up in Vinton and moved here in the 60s, and there wasn't a lot here then. I can't imagine what it was like then, but that was just her way of enjoying her upbringing and not maybe associating herself with the farm, though she loved it. She loved the farm. She loved growing up there and when I've talked to people that, that grew up in the 30s and 40s and 50s, they know hard work. Uh, the farm is not just a fun place to be. It's where you, where you work, you, whether it's with the animals or the f uh, gardens or the chores that you have to do. Uh, I was talking to a lady in our church a few years ago, an older lady, and, and she told me, and I'd, I'd never thought about this, she said, I didn't go into a grocery store until I was a late teenager. We, we lived off the land. We ate what we grew and what we couldn't eat, we canned and we would eat later on and that was just a part of their life. Uh, I guess I met Dot at, at Joe's 
funeral. I really didn't know her other than just having met her, but I'm sure she was a strong lady. And the reason I say that is not because I knew her, but I know Joe and Kenneth. And you gotta be strong to survive in that family. <laughs> I also knew James, Steve's, Steve and I grew up together in Crofton, and so I would see his dad some there as well. Family of five boys and two girls. Growing up on a farm, and you got a lot of stories and a lot of memories together, things that you've done, things that sometimes, some things you're proud of, some things you're not, some things you do for, on your brothers and sisters and you tell about, and some of them you don't. I'm finding out things now my kids did when they were young that they, they were ashamed to tell me about till they were adults. I'm going to ask Kenneth to come. Kenneth, I'm going to let you come at this time and share. Kenneth, you can, you can come now. But anyway, this is going to be short. My mama was standing at the cook stove washing dishes one day. Dorothy's over on the right hand side, rinsing and drying. And Alfred kept going by and pinching on the button, making a holler. And mama was getting out there for hollering. So, about the third time he come through there and done that, Dorothy grabbed that butcher knife we cleaned up the hog meat with. And they went out of sight over the hillside and said some really serious words what she's going to do to his butt if she caught him. <laughs> Last time I seen him, he was going down through the backwoods toward the bar Bowyer farm. <laughs> she never caught him. <laughs> but anyway, she had a rough life, and I was proud of her. <laughs> she really watched out after me a bunch. Even on up in, uh, she took me in down in Norfolk. I had a, I sold out everything I had in 64, went down and went to work for Ford, and she put us up for the weekend. I went to work Monday morning that quick. That's how fast I found the job. <laughs> but anyway, Indian River Road, if any of y'all from Norfolk knows where that is, that's where the Ford plant was at. Oh. Got some good experience. The guy I worked for, he had me out there working on airplanes too. Out in the back, had to wreck the airplane. I'd go out there and take parts off so he put them on the hood. But anyway, after 55 years of mechanic and I'm away. <laughs> And it wasn't all forwards there, I'm telling you it right now. <laughs> Next. <laughs> I'm going to tell you what, all y'all, make sure you got the good Lord in your heart. Because if you don't, you ain't going to make it as old as I am. I'm going to tell you that. Because I've been through it too. <laughs> Those are typical Wheeler stories. That was way after my day. <laughs> As a teenager, Dot took a job at American Visco here in Roanoke. And the family was so gracious to write out a lot of things about their mom and things they wanted to share. And so Dot was coming home from work one day with a coworker, I believe, and was introduced to Delmar, which Instantly, it was obvious that she had a, a love for him or a liking for him, and he did for her. Uh, that was in the spring of 1946, and first date was the church. That, that impressed her. That's, that's a good thing. You don't see that today. Uh, it's, it's other places that people go, but he took her to church. The second date was to meet his mom. And then in sep September of the same year, they were married, September the 21st, I believe. Within three months. That's exactly what I tell my kids not to do. That's, that's when I say things like, you know, three months in today's society is like a year and a half back then. You know, try to, that doesn't work with my kids. I don't know if it works with yours or not. But... They were blessed 44 years together and were blessed with three children, with Pam and Dale and Lori. I 
I often say at funerals that our loved ones live on. You know, we've come here to remember Dot's life and share some things about her. But her body is here, but her soul and spirit are with the Lord. But our loved ones live on. They live on, they live on in our hearts. Nothing can take that out. They live on in our memories. They live on in eternity. And I believe they live on in the characteristics of their kids. And I had the opportunity to meet with the family and especially had to spend some time with Pam yesterday. And, and I, I know from experience that our parents' lives rub off on us. Some of what we are is what we appreciated about our parents. And so even though I didn't have an opportunity to talk with Pam in an extensive, uh, Dot in an extensive way, talking to Pam gave me a lot of insight of what your mom was like. And so I appreciate that and share with me yesterday and feed me and all that you did yesterday. The Raglan home was a special place. The kids learned going to church and not just going to church but serving in church. Prayer was a regular part of their home life and they had modeled before them values that are very much appreciated then and I wish were appreciated today. Uh, families have gotten away from being together and sharing together and loving together and reunions and family gatherings and holidays together. I mean, everybody's at all other places and don't have time for each other. But that was not true with this family. The Raglan home was always an open house for any of the kids in the neighborhood who wanted to come by. So if they wanted to come in, the door was always open. And that would mean that the house would be turned into a game room or a dance floor or the nearby lots would be places to play football or baseball or whatever and their dad was right there in the midst of it and the mom always supporting them. If they were in scouting, uh, they were there, both parents, even scout leaders, I think, uh, cheerleading, sports, whatever the kids were involved in, they were a part of it. Again, not only did a lot of families today not grow up with a faith and a, a religious background. But many kids that I've talked to that are not kids anymore, people your age, they didn't know fun growing up. I mean, it was so much work, and you worked, but the parents almost shunned on enjoying your life and being a kid, and evidently you guys didn't have that. You had the best of both worlds, the work ethic, and also being able to, to do fun things with your friends and your your neighbors growing up, and you got to appreciate that. Um, one of Dot's goals was to get her GED and, and be certified as a nurse, and she was able to do that. And as I share with the family yesterday, as they were sharing with me, and as I read over some things that they wrote, it was very evident that Dot had a great love and compassion for people, a very giving spirit others before herself. You know, it was said of Jesus that he came to serve and not to be served. Or he, he came to be served and not to, uh, he came to serve, excuse me, he came to serve and not be served himself. And, and in Dot's life, she served other people. She was a, a, a private nurse for a, a, a family that was down in the Tidewater area. When, when Delmar worked for the railroad here in Roanoke in the early 50s, there was a, a, a big, huge layoff. And so wasn't a lot of jobs that paid a lot of money, good money here in Roanoke. And so he moved to the Tidewater area. And that's where most of the family grew up for many years. That was their life and where they made their careers. And that's where she got a job working as a private nurse in one of the nursing homes for a family there. At age 52, her husband, began to develop Alzheimer's and probably dementia. And in those days, in the 70s, it really wasn't well known that disease and how to, how to deal with it. And it's a, it's a hard life to deal with. My mother just passed away last month and she had dementia and it, it takes constant care. And I appreciate my sister and the time that she gave and I know that Dot did that for her husband, left the private practice and gave her 
heart full time to her husband. I'm sure she was glad to do that and she loved him and was compassionate. But it takes a lot of effort. It's a 24-7 job. I know Pam came home to help out some as well. And uh, if you've been a long time caregiver for somebody or you know people that have, their life is just tied into that situation because they, they have to be there. And even after her husband died, I think for maybe one or maybe two of her cousins, she gave long-term care as well. And that just was such a part of her life and her compassion. And I think that was the reason that, that her children, you know, went into nursing or skilled care or fire department, I think, uh, Dale, you were with. Again, serving other people. And, you know, you guys have experienced things in people's lives at, at the lowest point of their life and experienced and seen things that most of us would have a hard time dealing with if we could deal with it at all. I know you guys have. But that was what mom was like, wasn't she? You know, she, if you needed something, she was there. It didn't matter what. Um, a number of years ago, she had a situation happen in a rental house in Blacksburg where there was some water issues and she had just remodeled the house and I think uh, Pam said that led a lot to her, some of her physical decline. And she got COVID and dealt with that in the hospital, wasn't expected to live. She, she battled through that and was in a, a nursing facility and I know the family felt like with the progress she was making that it would just be a, a short time there she'd be able to come back home. Things didn't work out that way. The Lord had other plans for her. I, I want to read something that the family wrote, uh, and, and most of what I've said today has been things that they have shared, but I, I thought it would be good just to read a couple paragraphs about their mom. And I think about a verse in Proverbs chapter 31. I think it's down near the latter part of the chapter. Proverbs talks about a virtuous woman, a hard work and one that always cares for her household and makes and supplies for their needs and cares for her husband. But in the latter part of that verse it says, her children shall rise up and call her blessed. And I've seen that and it's, it's been an inspiration to me to see you guys love for your mom. And not everybody has that and, I, and you know that but I don't think, and, and I've had a parents that love me as well, I don't think we can appreciate people who've not had that. I mean we understand it but I'm glad that you guys didn't experience that in your life, that, that you knew the love and the work ethic and the morals that your mom had. She suffered from numerous health issues starting early in her life, which required multiple surgeries and or downtimes through the years and gradually made accomplishing tasks more difficult. But she fought through them for the sake of her family and continued determination to accomplish her goals. Activities became the worst of uh, arthritis became the worst of affliction that she dealt with for many years. And when the disaster happened at her property that I mentioned a moment ago, physical and emotional demands greatly increased. She moved in with Pam, and Pam had moved from the Tidewater area to Harrisonburg for help with her property as well as assistance for her worsening mobility issues. Distant family members remained in contact with almost daily phone calls and frequent visits. And, and, and I would commend you with that. I mean, as I visit nursing homes, and I know she was with Pam and not at a nursing home during that time, but as I visit, I often hear nurses say to me, nobody ever comes to visit them. They're here by themselves. They're just put there and forgotten. But I commend you for touching base with Donna on a regular basis and calling her regularly and coming by to visit. It shows your love for her and her love for you. Uh, Proverbs says, if a man is to have friends, he must show himself friendly. And I often say to people, you know, you reap what you sow. When you care about other people, people care about you. And when you could care less about somebody else, <laughs> when you need them most, they're not going to be there for you either. Dot continued in fair health until 2019 when COVID was running rampant to infection and worsening of a heart condition put her in the hospital, nearly dying multiple times while in the hospital for over two weeks. She was discharged on hospice at the Sunnyside Communities, the top five 
rated retirement assisted living long term care facility that was near Pam's home in Harrisonburg. Not expected to live over the next two to three months, she gradually regained strength, but due to lower extremity muscle damages, was no longer able to walk and was bedridden. Received an excellent care, she became feisty. I can't believe that about the Wheeler family. <laughs> Adopting the staff as their extended family enjoying interactions with the therapist. And it goes on to share about the fire department and friends that she made there that she would consider her children and she loved studying her ancestry and going to visit in cemeteries and you know I, I don't know all about her life but you have your memories the things that are special to you about about her life and I would encourage you as you have opportunity to share uh, tell Kenneth just say Kenneth let me say something and then you just share your thoughts about her life as well now let me share one passage of scripture with you before we close and before we go to the funeral uh, to the to the grave and when we leave today we're not going to go in a uh, procession to the cemetery most of you know where Shady Grove is we'll just meet the people there and do the service there when we get to the cemetery on our own the Pharisees were the religious elite of Jesus's day and they did not believe that Jesus was the Messiah they didn't believe he was God. They thought his teachings was contrary to the Old Testament scriptures. And so in, Luke cha in Matthew chapter 22, they met to try to somehow shame him or discredit him in the eyes of the people. Uh, the Jews had a great love and admiration for Moses, and rightfully so. Uh, Moses wrote the first five books of the Old Testament, Genesis, Exodus, Levitica, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy, the Pentateuch, or the Torah. And so they come up with this idea that somehow they could, if they could get Jesus to say something contrary to Moses' teaching, they would shame him and discredit his ministry. And so they got one of the scribes who was a, a very knowledgeable individual in Old Testament scriptures and probably had memorized those first five books of the Bible to ask Jesus this question. And in, in Matthew chapter 22 it says, they ask him this question to try to trap him to try to get him to contradict the teachings of Moses. And this was the question. What is the greatest commandment? And Jesus responded by saying, the greatest commandment is this. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. That's taken from Deuteronomy chapter 6. And I thought about that in relationship to this family and, and you're growing up. In Deuteronomy chapter 6, it says, Teach your children the ways of God. When you sit down at the table, when you walk, every situation of life, teach them about God and about God's ways. And then it says, Put them like frontlets between your eyes and signs on your hands. And if you've ever seen an Orthodox Jew or Ascetic Jew, you'll see these, these straps. They're called phylacteries, these straps with this little box right here made out of leather. And they'll have one wrapped around their arm with a box right here. One close to their heart and one before their eyes. And in that little box, they would put that scripture from Deuteronomy saying, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all your heart, soul, and me. It was called the Shema. They would quote that twice a day. So when the Pharisees try to trap and shame Jesus, what is the greatest commandment? He says what is most dear to the crowd, thou shalt love the Lord your God with all your heart. And so that shut up the mouth of the Pharisees and it surely endeared the crowd to Jesus. And then he said the second is like unto it, love your neighbor as yourself. The reason I shared that passage this morning with you is because that was characteristics of Doss life. She loved the Lord and she loved other people. So it would be proper to say, in all the paths that God t wants us to take in our life, to love the Lord and love others, that's the path that she chose. That's the life that she lived. That's the admiration that you have for her, that she loved the Lord. I think she was saved at Shady Grove years ago. She loved that church. Even though she'd been away for many years, she still loved this area and loved where she grew up. And I think even later in life, rejoined the church and, and did a lot to help the church through the years. Kenneth said when he was walking off the platform, make sure you know the Lord. 
And I hope you do. Not, not just know of the Lord. I was talking to a guy recently who had served in Vietnam. And he told me about an ins- a situation he had in a foxhole where somebody threw a grenade in, one of the Vietnamese, and he was able to throw it away before it detonated. And he said, you know, God saved me. And he said, I always thought that's what salvation was. I thought salvation was God physically saved me. He said, but it was later after I come home that I realized that salvation is not God delivering me from a bad situation, but it's putting my faith in Jesus Christ and him alone. There's a lot of people who believe in God and believe in Jesus, but they've never accepted Christ into their life as a personal Savior. And even as a Christian myself, having received the Lord as a young child, I'm, I'm, still, I'm still challenged by this passage. Do I love the Lord my God with all of my heart, with all of my soul, with all of my might, all of the time? If you're like me, the answer is probably no. <laughs> I still have a ways to go. But that's what our life should be in Christ. He died for us. He purchased us with his blood. And all that we might live for him. But not just live for God. John said in 1 John, if you say you love God and you don't love others, you're lying. Dot loved others. I think she did because she loved the Lord. And so time is short. Uh, Seven siblings. She was the oldest. Most of those, with the exception of Kenneth, have gone on. Life moves quickly, doesn't it? You know, it just, it's just a moment, you know, five years, 10 years, 20 years, 40 years, 50 years. They just go by. There's a poem that I think about often. It says, only one life will soon be passed. Only what's done for Christ will last. And so as we come to remember Dot's life this morning, Remember her love for the Lord and her love for others. And may we model that in our own life, realizing that our time is short. And many of you are doing that, and praise God for that. What a legacy she has left as her life has influenced many others and will continue to do so even past today. Shall we pray together? Father, we thank you for loving us, and I thank you for this family as we've gotten to know them through the years, just a special family to us, and we know some of them much better than others, but we come to a time like this, and we have fond memories, and we've looked at pictures of Dot's life and things that were special to her. We realize how quickly life can pass, and even... If we continue to live, as we get older, our health is not what it was before, and our mobility and our thinking and all those issues can change. So while we have strength in our life, we ask that we might, that you might help us live for you. And Father, if there's somebody here today that they they believe in you and they believe that Jesus died for them on the cross, but they've never committed their life to him, help them to do that. And Father, for those of us here today that are Christians, help us to live for you in this short span of life. May we have an influence and a value system and a commitment to you and others that Dot had. We pray this in Christ's name. Amen. We're going to have one more song, and then we're going to make our way to the cemetery. If you have any questions, you can ask one of the staff as you exit today. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now.
attendeth my way. When sorrows like sea billows roll, whatever my lot, you have taught me to say, it is well.